Today, I'm excited to present our recent project, Bits Fusion 1.99 Bits Weight Quantization of Diffusion Model. The text-to-image diffusion model has demonstrated a powerful capability to generate high-quality images. By inputting a target prompt into the diffusion model, it can produce aligned and visually appealing images. However, diffusion models, DMs, are challenged by their large number of parameters. For instance, stable diffusion V15 requires 3.44 GB for the floating point 32 model and 1.72 GB for the floating point 16 model. This substantial model size significantly burdens both transfer and storage, especially on resource-constrained hardware like mobile and wearable devices. Therefore, our goal is to reduce the model size and achieve extremely low-bit text-to-image diffusion models. For example, we are focusing on quantizing the UNet of the stable diffusion model to 1.99 bits. Let's briefly introduce the pipeline of Bits Fusion. Initially, we calculate the mixed precision recipe for the diffusion model and assign different bits to various layers. Additionally, we introduce several methods for quantization initialization. Second, during the training stage, we propose a two-stage training pipeline to mitigate quantization errors through quantization-aware training methods to obtain a 1, 99 bits model. During the inference stage, we integrate pre-cache time features into the 1.99 bits UNet to generate high-quality images. Next, I'll outline the methods used in Bits Fusion, divided into two parts. The first part covers our mixed precision strategy. We will discuss per-layer quantization error analysis and explain our approach to determining mixed precision settings. The second part focuses on low-bit quantization-aware training schemes, which include initialization strategies and two-stage training pipelines. Finally, we will present extensive results to demonstrate the effectiveness of our approach. Let's dive into the first part, the mixed precision strategy. Quantization is a compression technique that maps floating point values into low-bit integer values, typically reducing from 32 bits to 8 bits or even lower. This process can significantly save storage space with only a negligible performance drop. Therefore, quantization is a highly effective and popular technique for compressing generative models. We aim to apply mixed precision quantization to the diffusion model. In principle, given a fixed average bit budget, we want to allocate more bits to the more sensitive and important layers to maintain overall performance. So in the first step, analyze the sensitivity of each layer. We quantize each individual layer into one, two, or three bits and fine tune each quantized model with QAT method. Next, each quantized model generates 100 images from same prompts to compare with the full precision stable diffusion V15 model. Then we calculate the quantitative metrics such as MSE, clip score, PSNR, LPIPs. At the top, we display the MSE values resulting from quantizing each layer to one bit. We have highlighted certain layers and presented the corresponding images below. These images are from the quantized model, which involves quantizing the cross-attention layers, specifically the query, key, and value layers, as well as the convolutional and shortcut layers within the residual blocks. This figure demonstrates that different layers have distinct impacts on quantization. For example, the last convolutional shortcut layer in the residual blocks is the most sensitive in terms of MSE values and visual impact. Therefore, MSE can effectively reflect the quantization sensitivity and importance of each layer. We have measured the correlation between MSE and other metrics such as PSNR, LPIPs, and CLIP score. Our findings indicate that MSE, PSNR, and LPIPs exhibit a strong correlation and align closely with the visual perception of image equality. Therefore, we can rely solely on MSE as our quantitative metric to represent both PSNR and LPIPs. Next, let's examine the CLIP score. We observe that while some layers may exhibit smaller MSE values, they can still undergo significant semantic degradation, as reflected by larger changes in the CLIP score. Let's see the top figures. When comparing the 1-bit MSE and the drop in CLIP score, the cross-attention key layers show higher MSE values, but a smaller drop in CLIP score compared to the convolutional layers in the residual blocks. We can observe this phenomenon in the images. By quantizing the key layer highlighted in the green box, the teddy bear transforms into a person. This alteration significantly degrades the semantic information, resulting in a decreased CLIP score. So, we decide to adopt CLIP score as our second and complementary quantitative metrics. 
After the analysis, we will use both MSE and clip score drop as our metrics to decide the mixed precision recipe. We initially use MSE to calculate the sensitivity score. Beyond just considering the MSE, we also take into account the parameter size of each layer. This approach is adopted because our goal is to quantize layers that not only exhibit minimal quantization error, but also have a larger parameter size. By doing this, we aim to reduce the overall bit usage as much as possible while maintaining high performance. Based on the sensitivity score, we begin quantizing each layer. For each layer, we assess bit assignments ranging from one to three bits to see if the sensitivity score falls below a predefined threshold. If it does, we assign the corresponding bits to that layer and exit the process. If the score does not meet the threshold in any case, the layer is assigned four bits. Next, we consider using the three bit clip score drop as the second metric. For each layer, if the clip score drop is within the highest 2%, we assign an additional three bits to this layer. For layers with clip score drops in the highest 5% and 10%, we assign two bits and one bit respectively. After this step, we get our final mixed precision recipe. Next, we initialize our quantized model. The first strategy is time embedding pre-computing and caching. In the stable diffusion model, time information is integrated into the ResNet blocks through time embedding and projection layers. The time projection layers are linear layers that transform the time embeddings into time features. These features are subsequently integrated into the ResNet blocks. During the inference stage, the number of time steps is predefined, typically set at 50. Thus, there is no need to store the extensive time embedding and projection layers, each with D by 1280 parameters. Instead, we can store just the D by 50 time features, significantly reducing storage requirements. The second strategy involves adding a balancing integer. We begin by analyzing the weight distribution in stable diffusion through skewness measurements. The results, as depicted in the figure, show skewness values close to zero, indicating that the weight distribution in stable diffusion is symmetric. The issue arises with traditional quantization schemes, such as two-bit mapping, where symmetric floating point values are assigned to four discrete numbers, minus one, zero, one, and two. This mapping results in an unbalanced and asymmetric distribution. To address this issue, we introduce an additional value to the original four values in two-bit quantization. This adjustment balances the integer values, thereby enhancing performance. The third strategy involves scaling factor initialization through alternating optimization. Previously, many approaches employed min-max quantization initialization to retain the largest and smallest values in the model. While this method preserves weight outliers, it tends to increase quantization errors, particularly in one or two bit settings. Therefore, we propose using alternating optimization on the scaling factor to minimize quantization error. In each iterative step, we adjust the scaling factors and calculate the corresponding integer value. Throughout our experiments, we optimize the scaling factor through 10 steps to achieve convergence. After initialization, we begin updating the parameters of the quantized model through a two-stage training process. We utilize distillation loss to minimize quantization error. Initially, text prompts, images, and time steps are fed into the pre-trained, full-precision, stable diffusion V15 model to predict the noise. Subsequently, the same inputs are fed into our quantized model to predict the noise. We calculate the MSE between the noise predictions from the two models. Additionally, we replace 10% of the prompts with null to facilitate CFG-aware training. This CFG-aware quantization distillation approach is precisely what we employ to minimize quantization errors in the quantized model. To further enhance performance, we employ feature distillation, enabling the quantized model to learn the intermediate features from the pre-trained, full-precision diffusion model. By integrating the two approaches, CFG-aware quantization and feature distillation, we train the weights and scaling factors of our quantized model to minimize quantization error as effectively as possible. After training, we observe a variation in quantization error across different time steps. As illustrated by the red line in the figure, the quantization error increases as time steps approach T equals sign 999. To address this, we propose quantization error-aware time step sampling. Our goal is to sample more time steps where larger quantization errors occur near T equal sign 999. 
will utilize a beta distribution with alpha set to 3 and beta set to 1. This strategy allows the model to reduce quantization error in later time steps, thereby enhancing overall performance. This outlines our overall pipeline for stage 1 distillation training. To further enhance performance, we employ the vanilla diffusion model loss, enabling the quantized model to learn the ground truth noise. These are all the methods we've implemented to boost the performance of the 1.99 bits quantized diffusion model. Let's see the results. These results showcase our bits fusion method. We employed identical settings for image generation using stable diffusion V15 and our 1.99 bits bits fusion, utilizing the PNDM sampler, 50 inference steps, and a random seed of 1024. The first row displays images generated from the full precision stable diffusion, while the second row features images from our model. We also evaluated quantitative results, including the clip score on the 30KMS COCO dataset along with TIFA scores and Geneval scores. The figures demonstrate that our model, after stage one training, performs comparably to the original model. Additionally, our stage two model consistently surpasses the original stable diffusion V15 model in terms of CLIP score, TIFA, and Geneval scores. We also measured user preferences using party prompts. Participants were asked, given a prompt, which image has better aesthetics and image text alignment? A majority of 54.41% of users preferred our model, indicating it outperforms the full precision model. We conducted ablation studies for each of our methods by evaluating the CLIP score on party prompts. Starting with the basic quantization aware training, QAT method, LSQ, we incrementally added modules such as balance, alternating optimization, mixed precision and caching, feature distillation, time sampling, and fine tuning. Each addition resulted in a significant improvement. Our stage one model performs comparably to the full precision model while requiring less storage. Furthermore, our stage two model surpasses the performance of the original model. Finally, we present additional images for comparison. The images in the top row were generated using the 32-bit stable diffusion model, while those in the bottom row were generated by our 1.99-bit bits fusion model. Thank you.